fraud and abuse from Washington, from Wall Street, from the healthcare system, the privatization of our schools. None of this needs to be done. I mean, and this is all like extremely expensive in terms of lives, in terms of dollars, in terms of our future. There was no need to um, embrace drill baby drill which he has done, given the green light to fracking and offshore frack. oil. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and devastate the Arctic, as he is about to do. Report saying that uh, Obama was not the lesser evil, he was the more effective evil. Because, because the opposition goes to sleep. Um, he is such a talented orator and speaker. People feel very reassured, and his human spirit kind of overshadows the um, you know, the unfortunate uh, details on the ground about what's happening. The eviction blockades, the student movement that is standing up to say we will not just sit here and watch ourselves become indentured servants, you know, to um, erase student debt, bail out the students and the homeowners and not the bankers. We can do this and save our lives, save money, save the planet. Uh, this is what's affordable and just. To begin it is to inevitably win it. It's all about our standing up, because they don't have an exit strategy. They don't even pretend to. You know, at the um, DNC, the president was saying, oh, I'm going to create a million manufacturing jobs. Well, first of all, the manufacturing jobs he's talking about are the General Motors kinds of jobs, which is touted as how we're going to recover. Workers are getting, you know, half wages of what they used to get, and corporate profits are skyrocketing. So this is not what a recovery looks like at all. But the thought of one million jobs, you know, oh, we've got to be patient. Well, we've been waiting for five years. When uh, FDR implemented the New Deal, we had millions of jobs, you know, within two years. And, and good wages, too. I mean, and back then, they were. Exactly. Wages. That's right. So, good deal. we can do it. As Alice Walker says, the biggest way people give up power is by not knowing we have it to start with. And what they're afraid is going to get out of the bag here is the realization that we do have the power, we have the numbers, we have the solutions for creating jobs, healthcare as a human right through Medicare for All, free public higher education, um, bailing out the students, not the bankers, breaking up the big banks, providing healthcare as a human right through Medicare for All, uh, creating a welcoming path to citizenship for immigrants who are key parts of our economy and our uh, in our communities, downsizing the military, bringing the war dollars home, and you know the rest is history. Courage. This doesn't end on November 7th. Whether we win the White House or not, you know we can win the day, win the momentum, and the fight will go on. So it's important that we springboard into that fight, you know, as loud and strong as we possibly can be. And I encourage you all to take on the role of political therapist. Talk to your friends and, uh, and colleagues. Remind them the realities on the ground, that, un that the politics of fear brought us everything we were afraid of. We continue to send our jobs overseas and undermine our wages here at home. The attack on, on immigrant rights, on our civil rights, you know, much worse under Barack Obama than it was under George Bush. All those reasons we were told to just sit down and shut up and go along to get along. We've gotten all of those results in you know, by the droves because we were quiet. If you don't have the voice of the public interest, all you have are competing public relations campaigns on behalf of big corporate donors. That's why the Democratic and Republican parties keep marching in lockstep, heading over the cliff.